Hold tight. Hold on! Fishermen are a breed apart. It is very much a Marmite job. question my sanity sometimes. Every trip is a gamble. You just have to go with your gut instinct and your experience. Come up! Get it right, and the crew can come home with thousands. <laughs> Get it wrong, and they can catch nothing. My worst has been £2.50. I just want to be there to support him. As they battle against the odds and the elements. Things can turn quite nasty very quickly. I mean, it's the most dangerous job in Britain, is it? The worst injury I've seen. Death. Now there's a demand for a new generation who are tough enough to endure the call to sea. I don't know anything about fish. They swim. That one can definitely break people and definitely make people, yeah. I've never, ever succeeded at anything, you know? I ain't backing down on it. You learn who you are quite quickly in this sort of job. As fishermen, you are the last of the hunters. It's the middle of spring. And in the prime fishing waters 80 miles west of Cornwall, dozens of boats are competing to find the best catch. Skipper Phil and the crew of the Gavenic have been fishing out here for seven days. Come on, Charles! <laughs> See, Jackson throws his toys at his pram quicker than that. <laughs> They're bringing in 15 miles of nets they left out 24 hours ago, waiting for fish to swim into them. It used to be the thing, if you went to sea and you caught a boat full of fish, you would make money. Now, it doesn't work like that. Obviously, if the crew don't get paid, that's not good management. So you've always got that on your mind. Puppy power! <laughs> now I got that. Well, because you threw it like a man for a change, that's why. <laughs> Phil's a brilliant skipper. He's been a good friend of mine for a long time. I've been with him, working him now for about 13 years. He's godparents to, to my boy and all, and, you know, he's, he's a lovely bloke. He won't leave you grown skin, nothing like that. Come on, Torsen, pull the thing! Whoa! It's the last haul of the trip. Come on. Shout. You've got to shout it. Man, your balls dropped yet, Lou? Hey, <laughs> no, not yet. New recruit Louis is on his second week on board. Being at sea, it's not just like a job; it's more like an adventure. You got to shout, shout deep down in your belly. Oh, oh, oh. That's, it. that's it. He's mentored by old hand Stan. Aye, aye, pumpkin. Like the other deck hands, Stan earns a share of the profits. Monk! The bigger the catch, the bigger the paycheck. The best weight was 2,800 for the four days. And my worst one was 17 pounds. I got paid on a check. Yep. Get them bits over there, Lou, and that should be right there, mate. They've been hunting for hake, turbot and monkfish. Five, six, seven. But fishing this week hasn't been good. It's pretty dismal, really, in all fairness. Pretty dismal, really. 
The 220 odd boxes in here, 227 boxes, something like that. Let's get the flag saved and have a party, eh? So, yeah, whoopee do. Every week, it could be your turn to have a shit week. Where the guys here are thinking we're not earning what we used to earn. Some pressure can squeeze on a bit then, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll get him to give you a ring back, sir. Just um, five minutes, I'll get him to give you a ring back, all right? OK, right out. Stan, do. Stan. Oh, Ellen phone. Great. Stan's fiance Sharon has called the boat sat phone. Hey, well, easy, Tiger. It's usually used for emergencies. Hey, what's on? Oh, God, really? Their wedding oh, is in nine okay. weeks' time. Oh, yeah, yeah, listen, listen. Just go with what, just go with what you want to go with and have a look, all right? Well, I got a crack on here anyway. I got to see pretty much everything. He's just gonna get his suit, put it on, and go to the wedding. He's not got a clue, really. Okay, I'll speak to you soon. All right, bye, bye. <sighs> She's got the idea is they're all about having fish bowls. Fish bowls. Yeah. The flowers and stuff in them and shit. So well, just... how much is the fucking? 20 fucking fish bowls gonna cost for fuck's sake. Exactly. Thing. It was me, I was just sticking a glass pot, stick it on the fucking table. I wouldn't give a fuck if there was none of it there myself. No, I don't. Has it been a struggle wage wise? Yeah. Well, I'm borrowing, and I? I'm on borrowing. My bill is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and the bigger it gets, the more days I got to do it, see. The Gavenic must soon head back to port to sell what fish it has, while it's still fresh. Do you want to go out for some dinner tomorrow, do you, Mum? Just looking forward to having the big, like, 16, 18, 20, whatever inch steak. Homemade chunky chips, fried tomato, and a pint. Before he leaves, Phil is considering something most skippers would regard as much too risky, leaving out his nets so they can be catching fish while the boat's in harbour. In these busy waters, he risks losing thousands of pounds if they're towed through by rival trawlers. It's vital he finds a safe spot to drop them. Yeah, that's right, Captain. Yeah, get me OK, you're... Um, we, we was going to shoot on the bit of bank here, like, but... Are you working here, like? Right, OK. Yeah, fair enough. Um, we'll swing round here. Oh. Fishing restrictions have pushed boats from across Europe into smaller areas. Now they're all vying for the same fishing grounds. If, if you boys are working here, we'll go back to the Western. We won't bother, like... Oh. The old oceans are shrinking. With every skipper needing to make money, competition can become fierce. One or two of the French ones have been digging their eels in a bit the last couple of years. They're trying to get a trip and we're trying to get a trip. That can get a little bit heated at times. Who the fuck does he think he is? No gill netters in this area. This area is for French fishing vessels. It's fucking unbelievable. A He's French fucking... boat is threatening to tow through Phil's nets rather than go around them. He fucking thinks that he owns that whole fucking area. I tell you. <laughs> Unfucking believable. Who the fuck does he think he is? Yeah. That fucking is up there giving fucking shit to him to get off the bank, tell your friends, uh, no more gill nets in the area. We're not having it or some shit. Oh, it feels up there. I tell you, I'm fucking not having it. Let's have it. Yes, let's start a fucking war. What can we do? Oh, I don't like fucking shooting gear here. They fucking tow it. We shoot a load of gear here and steam off somewhere. We're fucking asking for a disaster. You can feel like you're the last little Indian sometimes, because. Some of these boats are, are big, bloody boats, you know? But if you don't shoot the gear, that's four days when your nets have been on the boat, catching nothing. 
On the other hand, if you go into land and leave the gear there, and a trawler comes along and tows it all away, you've lost big time. I mean, you know, there's a lot of net in the water. If it gets towed, it's a lot of money. Potentially, when all the gear's in the water, you could lose 100 grand worth of gear. You could land yourself in a whole world of shit. After this week's poor catch, Phil is forced to take an extraordinary risk. Right, so... Fellas! Usually, he'd protect his gear, but this time, Phil casts 50,000 pounds worth of nets that he has to leave unattended. Leaving 50,000 goods worth of gear out there with nobody watching it. How fucking ridiculous is that? But this is what we're having to do to make a living. Well, it isn't a living, is it? It's, you're just chancing your hand all the time. <laughs> Under pressure to get back to their nets, kiss. the crew of the Gavenic have just 36 hours yeah. back home. Right? Yeah, you? Yeah. Oh. Stan and Sharon are supposed to be making final arrangements for their wedding. What's the news? The news is we're going Saturday morning. Oh, you're kidding me. No. I'm sorry, but... Oh, really? Yes. Trust me, everybody else's face is the same. None of us want to do this, but it's the only option we've got because of the weather and no boats being there. The time is of the essence now. I know it is, darling. I know. Trust me. <laughs> I've taken all this into consideration, I know. You have to be quite independent, because obviously, you know, you get them home, might only be for a couple of days, and they're gone again. Have you been good? No, it's been naughty today. Um, have you been naughty? Yeah. 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 Right, now these, you have to put them on. Listen to Daddy. <gasps> Keep them on. And not just when Daddy's here, when Mummy's here too. Yes, Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> But there's no downtime for Skipper Phil. He can't relax until he's back at sea and has retrieved his nets. I'll put the pressure washer away, shall I? I'm like a dog that's been bitten by everything on a hot day. Fucking, I'm sick of these boats, I tell you. I'm fucking sick of it. Because you're all the time just shitting yourself that your gear's going to get towed away. Fucking just do things again and again and fucking again. The Govenic is due to leave in ten minutes. Ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Skipper Phil has left his nets unattended in international waters south of Ireland. How keen are you to go out to sea? Uh, very keen. A <laughs> moment. Very keen. <laughs> Until he gets back to them, the nets are vulnerable to being towed through and destroyed by other boats. But Stan is late. You're fucking joking, mate. Nothing to it. But I'm fucking raging. Yeah, it's not good being late. I can't remember the last time I was late. <laughs> hey, I'll fucking go with that. I'll tell you that now for nothing. I fucking does my fucking head in. When we finally get away and half the fucking gear's towed away, who's going to pay me back for the gear? Usually, if you're late and if you are late, late, the boat's gone. You'll come down the quay and there is no boat. <laughs> it's gone. Because he'll just leave you behind. He won't wait. Well, you, you, you got where we're 10 minutes to get here on Bloomin' Out, yeah? I'm fucking raging. I'm not as fucking sorry as I am. For fuck's sake. Fucking, get your fucking shit together. Stan arrives at the last minute. He's one crew member who can afford to push his luck. Stan might get away with it. Stan and Phil have been together for years. He's not too bad at um, avoiding 
uh, a chewing. You can get away with more than most. So they say. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Right, let's get roast off. Let's go. Stan, the little terrier, when he first came with us, he was a little cheeky 18-year-old. Too much to say. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes he still has. Hey, here he is. You're the only one who can turn up two hours late and not get a bollocking. <laughs> <laughs> Phil is heading 80 miles west to fetch the nets he left on the Labadee Bank, a fishing spot teeming with boats from all over Europe. Just two hours out of port, he gets some news from a friendly skipper. Oh, Jesus Christ. It seems a Spanish boat has unknowingly dragged its fishing equipment right through the Govenix unprotected nets. Shouldn't have left, shouldn't have fucking shot the bastard things back there, really. Should have gone in with them on, but there are we. It's fucking hard to go ahead, but it's easy to go backwards, isn't it? Yeah. Phil won't know how bad the damage is. Yeah. Until he reaches the spot where he left them. Fishing here 15 fucking years, and then all of a sudden we can't fish here because of boats. Even the Govenic's newest recruit, Louis, knows this could be serious. How much damage and how much money does it cost, like, when you lose losing that? Could be five, six hundred quid's worth, or it could be the whole tier, and uh, it's about ten grand. Fucking hell. It's more money, isn't it? Yeah. Who, who has to pay for it, you know? We will. It will come off the expenses, come out of what we earn. Oh, all right. Do you think, like, how can that happen, like, whole big ocean and then someone still manages to go through the only place you've put the net or whatever. Like, you realise the money each time the net breaks, it's like the worst thing to happen. Fucking bastard weather! Phil has reached the spot where his nets lie damaged. And it's even worse than he feared. They've been severed from their marker boys and are now adrift on the ocean floor. Fucking marvelous. The gale force winds will make it even harder for Phil to find them. It's shitty weather. It's just so dangerous. I can't see it! For fuck's sake. But you can't wait because you can pretty much guarantee that it won't be there next week. You, you, you've got to get it now or never, like. The only way to get the nets back will involve a dangerous job, feared by all fishermen. We we'll all look at each other, we're all kind of thinking, please don't mention get the creep out, please don't. Why don't son, get the creep? Fuck. Creep here. Creep. Creep out. Fuck. This is what we don't want to be getting out. Fucking damn recipe. Bollocks. The creep is a barbed hook that's dragged along the ocean floor. Using it can easily injure a crew member. I fucking hate the creep. That's the thing we don't talk about unless we have to. Wake the creep up. No, the creep is sleeping. Ready, are you? Drunk it. Watch your feet stand out of the way, cos it'll go fucking fast. And the last thing you want is getting a bite in that and you'll be fucking gone. He's chucking it. Ready? Why 
Yeah, we'll shout for it, The creep can either rip through the gear and catapult back inboard. The nerfs get in the propeller, then that's it, you're, you're knackered. Can I try and turn her? Stand by, everyone. It's quite intense. You can imagine the boat tipping. If it got caught on something at the bottom of the ocean or something, it would have pulled the ship over. It was quite scary. Got something. She's swinging. I don't know if I'm going to be able to haul this or not. I don't know. Do you have a prey out there? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be much for going to church or nothing like that. But quite often he's the only friend out there you've got. You know. I just talk to him sometimes and hope he's listening. You know. Sometimes you're saying thank you very much for being being on our side. Wait another size. Where have you gone now? <laughs> Come on, baby. Fingers crossed. Come, come, change. Oh, that's it. It's got it. Can try and get it all more. Before Phil can work out the extent of the damage, the crew must get the nets off the creep. Oh, fucking really? Oh, for fuck's sake. Come out. Yes! Fuck me, yes! Ain't gonna come through otherwise, is it? Get a fucking strop round the net, then somebody in it. <laughs> I can be, um... Quite articulate at times if things aren't going right, you know. Oh, for heaven's sake! I've never seen nothing like it in my life. That's not one of my greater attributes. <laughs> Need a bit of fucking lessons in fucking seamanship. I'm trying to fucking wind blow it over it. Oh man, alive! Yeah, if me and him fall out, we will have a fallout. Oh. Now that's just gonna fucking slip. I told you the other day, it's all going round it about three times. I've told you not time and time again. Still wrong. Still fucking wrong. Look at him fucking shouting. Fuck's sake! Don't know how to put a fucking train strut on. <sighs> fucking asshole. Oh, he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Fucking. I don't know how he hasn't had a mental breakdown yet. You know what I mean? See? Enough excitement for the day, thank you very much. So I just, just like, there's no need to fucking start panicking. You no, know I mean? you don't have to be like that, you know? What, be a prick? Yeah. Fed up of getting chowed at for nothing. So fed up of being kept in the dark with mushrooms. I never had enough of it. I'll, set, I'll tell him straight. Sometimes you just feel like breaking down and crying. There's fucking shitloads gone. There's a fucking shitload of it missing. Oh, fuck me, it's half a mile missing. Half a mile missing? Yeah. 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 No, there's fucking shitloads gone. Fucking shitloads. £20,000 worth of nets have been destroyed or damaged. It will take Phil months to make up for it. Both tears towed to fucking bits. Oh, fucking hell. Fucking annihilated. If the crew are going to earn anything at all on this trip, they'll need to work even harder and steer clear from the threat of rival boats. The longer and longer the boat doesn't make money, you know, everyone's morale goes down then. Everyone thinks about it. A lot of people don't mention it, but they do think about it. 
Phil can't afford to lose more nets, so he decides to leave the busy prime fishing grounds of the Labadee Bank and try his luck 30 miles away. As the Gavenic steams west, Stan takes advantage of the boat's patchy Wi-Fi to try his fiancée, Sharon. Naha, who's this? I don't. I think it might be. Hello. Hello. What are, you do what are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing. I think your son wants to speak to you, if that's possible. Yeah, yeah, of course can, yeah, it's fine, yeah. I wonder if I could get... Hey, well, fits. Put your glasses on, please. Hello. Are you being a good boy? Are you? Let's try. The crew spend just a few days a month with their families. It can be quite lonely at times when things are going badly. Lonely. It's, it's all work and pretty much no home life. Jackson? No! Do you want to... No! Yes! No! No! no. no. For the ladies at home and the kids at home, it's definitely harder on them not being able to be there to help kind of makes you feel helpless, you know what I mean? Worthless sometimes. Where's Dad? There he's Where is he? Boat. On the boat. Yeah, boat What's he doing on the boat? Huh? What's he doing on the boat? He's catching... Fish. Fish, good boy. Fish. Be home soon, wouldn't he? Well, I spend more time on that boat with that crew than I do my own family. I missed first steps, first day at school. It was only the start of this year. That was the first time I took Jackson to the nursery. It's because I've never been here half the time. You know, and if you're not earning money, sometimes just you end up thinking, fuck this. Stan. You all right, mate? Yeah. Very quiet. We've all got mortgages. Kids, we're treading a very, very fine line at the moment. We cannot afford to take another knock. Look out! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you know. A oh, oh. hundred miles west. In the Celtic Sea, the crew of the Gavenic are three days into their fishing trip. Oh, the trouble is fucking trawlers and all there. They don't go anywhere else. I don't know. Skipper Phil has lost £20,000 worth of nets after a foreign boat inadvertently trawled through them. It will take him months to pay for the damage. It's a livid, but only fucking just there. Unwilling to jeopardise more nets, he's moved to a less crowded fishing ground. But so far, fishing has been poor. I've had a catch more here. <laughs> oh, beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you do. To turn this trip around, Phil needs everyone to up their game, including new trainee, Louis. Hello, Louis. Yep. My boy, your time has come to shine. Yep. How confident are you? that you could manage to work the, the uh, machine with eight gear on your own, the heavy stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be all right, but, you know. I ain't worried about you yeah. being all right. I don't give a fuck about that. I'm worried yeah, about yeah. you doing the job properly. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Louis is tasked with folding miles of nets alone. He needs to keep pace with the crew in the fish room. And I just wanted to impress Phil 
but God, it's like never-ending bad nightmare, you know. Hello. Fuck. What's happened? Push it underneath the wheel. Fucking annoying. Right, back up in a bit, all right? You get caught up or anything like that, just shout really loud. Okay. They'll hear you, right? But with everyone under pressure, the crew's patience is being tested. Stop. So you get and then stop. Stop it. So you can see the net then. Yeah. So you can see it's all clear now. Yeah. Smurf. Just I'll show him why I sat it off again. He had the end in, he had the net over, he's on the wrong side of my lip. He's going, yeah, yeah, I said, look. I think he's you keep, yeah, yeah, yeah with me, mate. And you ain't getting it. I think he's tired. Gotta be like, patient, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 have you got a sort of plan in your head or anything, just for tea or...? The fuck knows how long we're going to be shooting tonight. I have no idea. Yeah. Could be a five, six o'clock in the morning job. Don't know. OK. Six miles of nets are damaged and out of action. And so far, the boat's lost thousands on this trip. Phil decides to work the crew harder than ever. In hope they'll start catching more fish. Stressed out because he's catching fuck all again, eh? Oh, it's not our fault. It's not our fault, is it, or anybody else's? Whether he's in the right or whether he's not, there's only one god above the earth and there's only one skipper aboard the boat. That's the way it has to be. What a fucking cop. Not eating all day. I haven't eaten all day. Uh, I'm supposed to get a fucking sandwich. It's not much to ask, is it? Welcome aboard the SS Starvation. If you're in a situation where you don't like the decisions that the skipper makes, pack your kit and go somewhere else. Why the fuck do you want to do this job, boy? I don't know. Off your fucking nut, you are. That dick going to take a shove his job off his fucking ass. It's 1 a.m., and after 18 hours, the crew are still working. Oh, I hate my fucking job. I hate my fucking boss. What do you want to be when you're older, son? I want to be a pilot. What did you do when you was older, son? I went to sea. Why? Because I'm a fucking idiot. Good morning, it's a beautiful sunny day. Phil needs to keep his crew motivated. They've another four days' work ahead of them. Baby. You are a fucking baby. In my experience, babies never fucking sleep. Bastards. You gotta be careful you don't work the boys too hard, you know? Because with the best will in the world, they're human. It was a fucking long day yesterday, wasn't it? Do you want a day a bit lunch or tea or whatever? I've roast dinner at like five, six o'clock. I've like like a normal tea time night. Yeah, that's like that. Rather than sitting down with your eyeballs hanging out your head at two o'clock in the morning, looking at it, thinking, I don't really fucking fancy this. Do you know what I mean? What do you think of that for idea? Fucking brilliant. I'll do that then, eh? Yeah. Well, that's what we'll do then. It's a better fucking plan. I like that. I know sometimes, he, you know, he gets teasy with people and stuff like that, but that's the way he's always been. Oh, really? Why do you lot have to do this every year? Hey. He likes to scream, he likes to shout. No, you can't get out. So we have a swallow sandwich? No? But he is just big softy, really. Fishy fishies. Come on, 
Fish, yes. Stag do, which we'll do. I'll go with a float. I'm easy. Like Sunday morning? Nah, Sunday mornings I'm hard work. Every morning you're fucking hard work. Not as fucking bad as you in the morning, you <laughs> After three hard days in the new fishing ground, the crew are beginning to get better hauls. But if they're to stand a chance of making a profit on this trip, they'll need to start catching more high-value white fish. I've changed course three times. I can't make my mind up. I don't know what to do for the best. The trouble is the best chance of that means going back to the Labadee Bank, where Phil's nets were damaged. I'm at a fucking loss how to play this one. I really don't know. Um, I just I can't think whether to go and shoot the trammels in around where we was. Right. But it is a lot of trawler activity up there. The problem with that is... You could get that fucked. That could be fucking towed as well. You don't want that to happen. You want a double fucking disaster. We'll have no fucking gear left. Um, is it the wise thing to do to up sticks and fucking shift? You'd have to be on the fucking ball. Phil decides to risk his nets one more time, heading back into the heart of the prime fishing grounds, despite the danger of foreign trawlers. But to Phil's dismay, there are even more boats here than before. I can't understand how oh, there are so many fucking Irish boats here. Now. This bit here is fucking iffy as you want. Make up your mind, it's fucking cold down here. Every time that gear goes over the side, it's a risk. Right, so get ready. Hi, Jack. Hey, God! Thank you, God! Phil casts thirty thousand pounds worth of nets. It's a gamble that could make or break the fate of the trip. Got a low sober eyes. The wedding, how much fits in the cost? The rings were 600 odd quid, dress was 800 and something quid. Already got venues already sorted, just got to get it paid up now for the food and the rooms and pay for suits. Some organising, isn't it, mate? Up in the wheelhouse, there's trouble nearing. Harsh heels. Uh, do you receive me, Captain? Do you receive me ever? Harsh heels. A boat is heading straight towards Phil's nets. Any porgies about tonight? Yeah. I'm going to steam into a trawler here. We're going to get fucking hammered again here in a minute by the same fucking boat that towed the fuck out of us the other night. Oh, awesome. Our Gilles, you receive me here? Our Gilles, je suis anglais, bateau filé, gavanic, je coupe le Bonsoir. Guess what? Trawler trouble. Same I had this last week. Fuck's sake, mate. Our Gilles. Just we anglais bateau filé gavanic. You're getting very close to the fucking gear there, like. Ours heels. Already twenty thousand pounds worth of nets down. Another loss could cost Phil far more than just a trip. Ours heels. Oh man. We have nets, Captain. Nets. If you get another big hit in, in one year, that's it, you're fucked. You could be looking at bankruptcy. Our shields. The Gavenic is back on the Labadee Bank. <laughs> but the area is teeming with other boats. Our shields. <laughs> and 
one of them is veering dangerously close to Phil's nets. You received me, uh, Channel 16, Captain. You received me, over. Bonjour, Captain. We have nets, Captain. Nets to the uh, just to the east of uh, your position. If you turn now to the north, you will be clear. Have you seen them before? Our oh, Jules, it's good. Who's the boat, Steve? Our oh, Jules. The name's Spanish, fucking Spanish, French things. The big bastard. Is it? Is he playing ball? He is, yeah, but fuck me. He's playing to the limit of the fucking court, I gotta say. It's fucking close enough. We got any old flares or anything here? Flares? Yeah, fire him at him. I'm not gonna go firing flares at him. Fuck me. The crew will have to stay up all night to guard their nets. Losing the gear could make the difference between survival and bankruptcy. Right, son. This is the one that towed the fuck out of us the other day. Very nearly towed the fuck out of us again. Where he's going to fucking go, I don't know. This one up here is a Frenchman. He's towing down the edge of this bank. This in here now is a Spaniard. So keep an eye on him as well. That's it, son. OK? If that f comes near us, get me up. He's fucking having it. Oh, man. It's been a long night on watch for the crew. Do you want to do the wakey shakes? No. Don't be scared. Louis's been given the task to wake them. They're all lovely when you wake them up, especially Bricktop. <laughs> He's like a little ray of sunshine every morning. Yeah, for lads. Right there, for lads. Bricktop. Yeah. Are you up? Uh, mate, you're trying to wake him up, but he can't do it. <laughs> can't wake him up. Wakey, wakey. Eggs and bakey. Fucking in my face. Right, you little <laughs> You come in my cabin I'll, like that, I'll, I'll wake up nice. Smack you in your fucking mouth. <laughs> Everyone likes to be woken up differently. You learned this after a while. <laughs> yeah. Better fishing today could mean Phil and the crew start covering their losses. And everyone will stand the chance of going home with some money in their pockets. There is a lot on my shoulders at the minute, yeah. Pressure from Sharon going on my fucking ear all every day about this wedding, yeah. That was more pressure. Get to make money or be in the shit, <laughs> basically. There you go. Definitely a better run than last night. Not yet. Better Nick. Phil's gamble to risk his nets in busy waters is beginning to pay off. Bloody handsome, that is, isn't it? Good quality cod and hake are filling their nets at last. As soon as fish starts coming in and then, you know, you start filling boxes, it's a morale boost. It gives him a morale boost, it gives the rest of the crew a morale boost. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like, why can nothing go right? But. If you let things get on top of you, then you won't get very far at all. So I ain't it. A bit more better, huh? Help things along a bit. And Louis is holding his own alongside the experienced crew. Yeah, that's better. 
that it all himself was watched and all right. We're having a siesta. If you want. Yeah. Put five five that show. Yes! Love it when a plan comes together. Bugfish! No, I think you've done well, mate. Done a good effort today. Well done. I feel a lot better now I've done that well. But... Once you get used to doing it, you, you enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy having a good laugh, I, you know, but sometimes I fucking hate it. But same as anything. Cooked up in an office all day, typing on a fucking computer. Sat in a little f- square room watching loads of screens. I've got to be honest, I'd love to learn how to use computers and all properly and stuff like that and be a bit more on the ball with shit, but I don't know any of that because all I've ever done is this. You'll get used to it if you want to stick doing it. If you do, do. If you don't, if you don't, fuck off. <laughs> After a while, you just want to go home. Oh, God, I just want to go to bed. I want to give the missus a cuddle and a kiss. When you've had a hard trip and there's been trouble with trawlers, sometimes it's lovely weather and you just think, oh, I wish I was at home, you know what I mean? After seven hard days at sea, he's ready to take everyone home to their families. the eight-hour journey back to Cornwall, Stan can start planning his honeymoon. I want a beach, loads of bars, cocktails, that sort of shit. Well, that's all right, mate. Sharon's brilliant. I mean, this wedding, she's organised everything. I haven't done anything to do with it. I've been in and picked a suit. <laughs> that's hard. Where is the best place to go on holiday, weather-wise, in November? Checking on that. All right, here's what I found. Take Betty, check it out. It's like fucking Western Morocco, if I think. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. What is the weather like in Cape Verde Islands in October? I can't check the weather that far ahead, but here's the forecast for the next five days. <sighs> Fucking hell. Whoa, that seems uncalled for. Was it something I said? Shut up. This time, Phil is bringing home all his nets, keeping them safe from other boats. I'll do, boys. Catch her up tight. He'll have just three days back on land. Who do you offer to? To the wife, mostly. She's very good at absorbing some of the shit I come out with and softening it. And she's the boss at home, and when I go home, I do what I'm told. I'm part of the crew then, isn't it? The cats come higher up the pecking order at home than I do, you know what I mean? <laughs> flowers to on these? We put them on the suits or do we put them on the waistcoats? Does it take a certain type of woman to marry a fisherman? Yeah, a patience. <laughs> it's not for everybody, do you know what I mean? As long as you've got a nice understanding at home, you know, like with your missus or whatever and stuff like that, it, it works well. <laughs> Distance makes the heart grow fonder, as they say. We are gathered here today to celebrate the marriage of Gareth and Sharon and to witness their vows of matrimony. It's a little bit weird, really, because you kind of miss them the first few days that they've gone. Then you get used to it. And will you remain true to her for the rest of your lives together? I will. Then you know sort of roughly when they're due home, so you start 
wanting them home and whatever. And then when they're home, you think, oh, Christ, I wish I'd go back to bloody sea. <laughs> These kids are gorgeous, Brian. You look fucking gorgeous. Next time. Off, off. Brixham skipper Drew McLeod braves the weather after half his crew jumps ship. What are you waiting for? So I want to come and help. Whoa. Don't fucking look at me like that, Tom. Stop Just talking to me like this, Drew. Give me the fucking down. Run. If stuff goes wrong, it's not all my fault, is it? We're marking the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain as Dermot O'Leary hosts one of the most significant aviation tributes ever seen. Return of the Spitfires tomorrow night at 8. Next tonight, though, get ready for a shock or two. Although it was all right in the 1980s, not sure if Telly could get away with it now, though.